Uh, good morning. Um, seem to have had technical problems with Facebook again. Um, so I will try this once more. Um, I'm talking about healthy boundaries in relationships. Um, my name is Deborah Byrne. And I am from Deborah Byrne Psychology Services, known across social media as DB Psychology. Um, as I was saying, um, the the type of relationships I talk about in this blog are actually intimate relationships uh, to do with dating, um, you know, and anything else progressing right the way up until marriage. Um, I also mentioned um, that you really need to know what healthy boundaries are, that they encompass uh, psychology, uh, emotions and your physical uh, self. You also need to understand that um, you need your own healthy boundaries in place. Um, and sometimes that people that have had neglectful or abusive childhoods will not have uh, good healthy boundaries and will need to learn to develop them. They may need uh, therapy with a psychologist in order to do that. Or you can, um, you know, you can go and investigate yourself, as I said in the last video. Go and investigate, your, you know, how to put in place healthy boundaries. Um, and if you feel then you need some help, then go and ask for help. Um, these boundaries are very important um, because they, they really for yourself, um, you need those strong core healthy boundaries in place. If you are to have a good uh, healthy relationship with another person, particularly an intimate relationship. They also dictate how you're going to have different types of relationships with family and friends and with colleagues in work. Um, and if they're skewed, then people are going to, you know, use and abuse you, basically, um, or you will use and abuse them. Uh, more likely than not, though, you know, it'll be the it'll be the other way around. Um, so to have good, healthy boundaries, you know, they help you uh, be assertive um, you know, say no when appropriate. Um, they will, you know, show you how to have, you know, thoughts and feelings um, and your desires so that you can, you know, you know that they're your thoughts, feelings and desires and not somebody else's. Um, they will also help you develop good, healthy habits or self-soothing techniques as adults um, that I always talk about when I talk about self-care. They will also help you have really good self-care. Um, they will basically get you to, you know, take responsibility for yourself, have good self-esteem, uh, confidence and self-respect, which is very, very important. They'll also protect you on a physical level um, and, you know, not just psychologically or emotionally, but also in a physical level, because, you know, you'll be able to say oh, these are these are red flags and, and you know, oh, I'm out of here. I'm, I'm not going to put up with this kind of behavior and you will be able to step away. Um, if you have good healthy boundaries yourself, you're also going to have a better equal partnership with your, you know, in your relationship. So when you do get an, you know, an intimate relationship, it should be on a more equal level. Now, um, the the blog this week does talk about, as I said, intimate relationships. So it is about dating. It is, about, you know, questions to ask. There's a whole series of questions there. And it's 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 not even a full list of questions you should get out um you know there are a lot more questions and i'm just giving you a starter um you know areas to start in like finance children uh sex um you know how, what you're even going to call one another and um, how you're going to fight there's a whole range of questions there to ask um that you know you should be asking yourself and you should be able to um be willing to ask your partner to, to ask this new person, maybe even that you're only just starting to date. So they do go, you know, there are levels. You have to use a little bit of common sense when you're reading them. You're not going to ask somebody, um, you know, uh, how are we going to divvy up the money if we ever got married and things like that, if we've only just met them. So, you know, use your common sense. It depends on where you are in the relationship. And the other thing is, even if you are already in an intimate relationship and you're in a relationship with somebody and you re you read through the questions and you think, uh, you know, we're having problems here. Um, see, can you work with them yourself? See, can you, will those questions that I have posed, will you be able to work them out with your partner? Or maybe you need, uh, you know, couples therapy in order to change, to change the boundaries. Maybe he or she that, you know, depends on whether you're a man or a woman or, uh, you know, who you're in a relationship with will be 
uh, you know, are they able to set healthy, are they able to set healthy boundaries as much as you are able to set healthy boundaries? So, you know, the key is have your own healthy boundaries first and foremost. Um, the next key point I would like to make is active listening and being able to communicate with anybody, whether you're in an intimate relationship with them, whether you've just met them or whether they're a work colleague or a friend or family member, being able to use active listening is hugely important. Um, it is a skill I don't think we're taught. Um, it is something we need to practice more. Um, and it is a key skill in any relationship, any relationship. So if it is something that you don't know how to do, um, I do talk about it in uh, setting healthy, healthy boundaries for yourself. I do talk about how to do that. I talk about it in open communication, you know, bringing good communication into relationship. It's another blog I have up there. Check that out. Check out how to do it and then start practicing it. But don't practice it if you're having a row. OK, practice it in other ways. Practice it in small ways. Um, that is going to give you a quick win and give you a boost in self-confidence and you get the whole idea of how to use it and keep practicing it. It's like any skill, we need to keep practicing it in order to for it to become automatic. So that would be one thing, you know, if you haven't done, done it before, if you aren't using it, it is something that will improve any relationship that you have. Um, the next thing would be, I would suggest, yeah, go through the different questions and um, read through them and see what's relevant to you at this moment in time. And, um, you know, see, do they help you? Um, you know, can you tick off on any good, you know, are they, you know, are you working them out? Are you working through them? Um, I do have a checklist as well this week. And if you want to get that. You'll find the link on the blog and you will be able to work out whether if you're in an intimate relationship, whether it has good boundaries or unhealthy boundaries. So do check that out. Work through the questions. Um, become more aware of your relationship using the questions and see if there are any red flags coming up for you. Now, there are red flags in general. That you need to be aware of and I do list them out particularly in the checklist um, there are red flags that maybe you have personally um, because remember boundaries encompass you know your your beliefs uh, people's behavior your behavior and the choices we make choices other people make um, there are you know your sense of responsibility and um, there's the responsibility you know how the other person acts in terms of and also intimacy so if they are doing stuff that you know they could be red flags in general which would be you know i'm talking about domestic violence here and that domestic violence of course can happen when you're dating somebody it, you don't have to be married to them for years um they don't you know it doesn't have to involve physical violence so check out you know is this a good, strong, healthy relationship or are there any signs and red flags that I am missing because my own personal healthy boundaries are skewed? And this is why I started off by saying you have to have good, strong, healthy boundaries yourself in order to have a good, strong, healthy relationship with somebody else. Um, so check them out. On top of that, then you may have some uh, red flags that you have developed down the years you may say I will never accept X behavior from somebody else again um, because of something that has happened to you or you know something that is that is um, uh, something that happened in your childhood to your, one of your parents or something like that or to a friend or, or somebody else so you know you may have decided so you know sometimes we have to check in with ourselves is, are my boundaries being, you know, are, are they being pushed? Because sometimes very subtly people can push you back, push the boundary back, push the boundary back very slowly over a number of months or years. And you don't realize that your boundaries have become skewed because you love this person so much um, that when they, they push back the boundary, 
it's done so so subtly and so slowly over time that we don't recognize it um we don't see things have changed we don't see that red flags have appeared